Back-to-back -back games, traveling back-to-back -back games, and the Bulls take wins in both of them. And this win against the Hornets was one where they needed to come in and just take care of business against a shorthanded Charlotte Hornets team. Bulls were shorthanded too with no Drummond and Kobe White, but this is a team you have to beat when they don't have LaMelo Ball or Terry Rozier. And then Gordon Hayward didn't even play in the second half. Some of the game wasn't that pretty. Bulls were a little sloppy at times. They let the Hornets hang around for a bit, but the Bulls really had the lead for most of this game. And once we got to the fourth quarter, the Bulls stopped messing around and finished these guys off. Now, the biggest surprise from this game is that when you look at the performances, from the Bulls best players and scoring options and Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan and see that they combined for 19 points, combined 19 points. Zach Levine had more points in that fourth quarter alone last night against the Nets than they both did him and DeMar combined tonight. And you look further and you also see Io had an off night on offense, couldn't find a stroke. Vucevic also struggled a bit on offense and yet somehow the Bulls ended up winning this game by 18 points. Again, I know the Hornets were shorthanded, but it's a testament to the Bulls bench mob, the depth that this team has and their ability to really go on these rallies and pick up the slack when Zach and Damar are having off nights. Javante Green, Derek Jones Jr., Goran Dragic, and Caruso were incredible tonight, and not even just offensively. They were getting their hands everywhere on the court, deflecting passes and drives to the basket, hounding the perimeter after the Hornets started off red hot from three with their starting unit, making plays, protecting the basketball. This is what I want to see from the Bulls. Team basketball, team effort. I've said it before, yes, it's fun to see Levine and DeMar go off and put up 30, 35 plus points. But when everyone is contributing, everyone is getting involved, you become that much more of a threat when you know that even if your top players aren't having their best nights, that other guys are gonna pick up the slack. Know what to do and take over the game if needed. The Bulls did not have that at all last year, and it's what makes this team much more unique is the level of depth they have over their competition. Speaking of the bench mob, you guys know benchmob.com is a sponsor of this channel. Show your support for the Bulls bench mob by getting your bench mob merch. You can wear them to the games, around the city, whatever. They have great stuff, high quality, great designs. I actually wear that stuff around the Bay Area and get hate for it from all the time from Warriors fans. But whatever, I don't care. Bench Mob is also giving an exclusive offer to viewers on this channel, 20% off your order when you use the code BULLCENTRAL20. I'll leave a link to that, the site and code in the description if you're interested. But anyway, it truly was the bench mob tonight that enabled the Bulls to win this one. Javante Green, been kind of quiet this season, of course. He's had those insane highlight reel dunks, and he's been a monster hustling on the court on defense. But for his offense, it wasn't like what we saw in the preseason where he was balling out. But tonight, 17 points, 7 for 7 shooting, 3 for 3 from 3, 8 rebounds, 2 steals, 2 blocks. Javante was getting it done everywhere tonight. Derek Jones Jr., the hustle and effort, his length to get in passing lanes, deflect plays, cause turnovers, he was key in this one as an energizer. 10 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. Still bothers me that Derek Jones Jr. was out of the rotation to start the season. You know, Billy Donovan did that last season as well for some stretches where he just didn't play Derek Jones Jr. Just made no sense to me because he's so versatile of a player, hustles, plays defense, athletic. Yeah, I want to see more Derek Jones Jr. in the games. Goran Dragic, 16 points, 6 for 9 shooting, was putting dudes in the spin cycle, one-legged fadeaways. Are you kidding me? Is this guy really 36 years old? I know he wasn't doing this last year. You know, I tweeted this out during the game, and I never thought I would say this because if you've been tuning into my channel for a while, you know I was not high on the Drummond and Dragic signings. I thought they were more, well, every other free agent got picked up and the owners won't let us go over the luxury tax threshold. I guess we'll sign two guys that no one else really wants who are now afterthoughts in the NBA. But between Drummond, Dragic, and Derek Jones Jr., all three free agency signings from this offseason, Derek Jones Jr. was re-signed, of course. Those three guys could possibly be the biggest bargain signings of the offseason across the NBA, as all three of those guys combined are making less than $10 million this season. That is insane when you look at their level of production relative to some players who are getting twice that amount by themselves, let alone a combined salary of less than $10 million. Anyway, great games from those three. And then Caruso just doing what he does best, pestering everyone on the court that he guards, hit a couple big shots down the stretch as well. I just love this Bulls bench unit compared to what we had last season. And then it wasn't just the bench mob who stepped up in a big way with the Bulls star players cold tonight. Patrick Williams showing more and more consistency. This is 
three or four games now where we've seen him be aggressive, attacking the hoop, taking smarter shots, playing with more confidence. The last three games, he has reached new season highs and every one of them tonight, he finished the game with 16 points, a season high, of course. He was seven for seven shooting for a while, but then missed his last two shots, ended the game seven for nine, two for three from deep, six rebounds, two blocks, and get this, he was a plus 19 tonight. For all those games in which Patrick was a negative in box plus minus, when you had all the other starters who were putting up positive ratings, now you have Pat putting up a plus 19 while DeMar tonight was minus 9, Vooch minus 4, and Io plus 4. This has to be getting Bulls fans excited because you're seeing Pat get better with every passing game. Something switched with this kid where he's now just going out there and saying, you know what, I'm just going to hoop. Have fun and not think about how others are perceiving me. The front office has preached patience with Patrick Williams. Maybe we should have listened from the get-go, but we do still need to see that continued progress from Patrick before we get back to thinking he's going to be a star one day. I need to see him doing something like this all season long. Anyway, for DeMar, Zach, and Vucevic, I mean, you'd have to think they're just a bit fatigued after playing a lot of minutes last night. Levine was working his butt off in that fourth quarter. To see him go four for 16 from the floor is pretty uncharacteristic, even when he's having an off night. That's still an uncharacteristic shooting night for him. He was contributing in other ways, though. He was out there playmaking and moving the ball around, and when he recognized it just wasn't his night. And then actually, the same goes for DeMar as well. Two for 11 shooting, two field goals for DeMar. I feel like that has to be the lowest we've seen him him put out in a Bulls uniform, but like Levine, he was doing other things on the court, only nine points, but finished with five assists and seven rebounds. It was also good that Billy gave him a little more rest when it was clear things just were not going his way and he looked gassed on the court. Only played 28 minutes, which is probably the right call given that they were just in the back-to-back, -back, especially when the bench unit was handling things and they didn't really need DeMar's help. Anyway, the Bulls are back up above 500, five and four now. They have tomorrow off before they head back east, this time to Boston to take on the Celtics which I'm sure the Celtics are going to want revenge with the way the Bulls stormed back and took them out in that first meeting between these two teams. As always, I'll have a live chat for that game. Feel free to join if you are interested. And of course, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.